What's going on, Falcon fan? This your boy Rakundo coming back at you with another video. So, guys, as we know, the Atlanta Falcons did a great job this offseason addressing most of their needs and adding really, really good, talented players to this roster. However, there are some areas that, you know, still concern, and it's really based on the inexperience of some of the guys that got in some of those depth areas. So we're going to talk about some of those areas today and potentially some guys that the Atlanta Falcons could consider if they wanted to bring some more experience to it, or are they just going to you know roll with their younger guys and do the development thing that they're trying to do. But you know how risky that can be because if you're trying to go out and win this year, like the Atlanta Falcons definitely trying to do, you want to make sure that you got some guys that in there that you can trust. So we're going to talk about these potential guys that the Atlanta Falcons could add. We know their cap situation. We'll talk about that as well. So guys, before we get into the video, if you have not already, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the notification bell so you know I drop another video. Please hit the like button so I know you guys like here that I talk about. Then please share my video throughout this YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So like I said, guys, a couple errors concern um, that the Atlanta Falcons definitely, definitely probably should have addressed, um, you know, considering... Um, like I said, inexperience. It's all about competition this year, but it is some, in some areas, particularly in the re receiver. Um, we know the kind of talent we have in the receiver room there. And then, of course, again, with the middle linebacker, something that we could, we could really have an issue with if we look into, you know, if we get injuries and things like that. So, you know, should the Atlanta Falcons kind of address both of those areas? We'll talk about that today. And I definitely want to get you guys' opinion on it. We heard the news today. We'll start with receivers first that DeAndre Hopkins was actually released from the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, we know that DeAndre Hopkins um, is definitely a guy that still has some talent in this league. But his contract could definitely be a little bit more higher than the Atlanta Falcons would want to spend. Also, potentially where he would want to play because he is a free agent. He can kind of go where he wants to go. Uh, he did mention that he wanted to play with a veteran quarterback. So playing somebody like, you know, a second year quarterback, Des Ritter, may not be, you know, something he would want to do. However, guys like Calais Campbell, Bud Dupree decided to join the Atlanta Falcons. So you never know, you know, they could be enticing to DeAndre Hopkins to help help this, you know, score get to things that they want to be where they want to go this year. So um so DeAndre Hawkins definitely is the first guy that I kind of considered because he just came out. The news just came out today. We'll talk about him, what he could potentially bring to this team. You know, he he, he would, I still say he could could definitely be the number one, but we would, would I don't know if the Atlanta Falcons want to use him that way, depending on how much they're paying him, of course. But I still would like Drake to be the number one receiver. DeAndre Hawkins definitely be a, a 1A you know, one B guy for for the Atlanta Falcons because of his talent. He can actually, you know, tutor guys like Drake London to help those guys get better. But a talent like that already, you know, bringing to this talented roster that Atlanta Falcons got um, just would add and definitely help Des Marita out a, a whole lot. Um, so, like I said, at the end of the day, bringing a guy like DeAndre Hawkins would be interesting. But first, we definitely have to think about the price tag. And we'll definitely think about his his desire to actually want to play with a, a second-year quarterback in Desmond Ritter, who only has like four starts. So it'll be really interesting to see how this folds out. More than likely, he's going to go to the AFC. If that's the case, that's good. Stay on the AFC and let all those guys beat up each other. And we can just, you know, take our NFC and try to win our division and, you know, make a playoff push that way. But Atlanta Falcons do have $10,768,000 um, left to spend this year. Um, so if they would want to consider somebody like DeAndre Hawkins, like I said, it depends on what price tag that would be at. Um, of course, we know DeAndre Hawkins is he's 30 years old, so he's getting closer to, you know, to the end of his career. But Julio actually signed a, a big contract when he was, at 30 maybe that was not the right decision considering the way it turned out for him but 
DeAndre Hopkins could be where he could get another big contract, you know, for a a three-year deal or something like that to push him to 33. So we don't know what he's looking for. And like I said, he could be wanting to go to where he think is more of a contender than our young Atlanta Falcons. So um, he would be the first guy. Another guy that I really considered was Sammy Watkins, a guy who's who has so much potential but could just can't never stay healthy um, throughout his career. But guy, definitely a veteran guy to come in would be the number two easily. Um, behind Drake London, but he could actually have has production in this league, a veteran guy that can definitely help out this squad. Somebody that's more proven than some of the guys we got. We know Mac Hollins had a breakout year last year, but besides that, it's not a whole lot to show from there. So like I said, this young receiver core could definitely use a veteran, you know, but the Falcons could definitely go in another direction where they feel like they're going to try to get some of these younger guys opportunities and like I said numerous of times, we do have enough pass catchers on this roster where it could be an issue. But if a guy like Drake London goes down, knock on wood, you know, where would the Atlanta Falcons be now if they're, if they're in their receiver room? And Drake London is still young. But, you know, so no veterans there, no experience. So Atlanta Falcons definitely could add somebody else. We just don't know what that looked like. But um, DeAndre Hopkins and Sammy Watkins – would be two of the guys that definitely you could probably, you know, want to consider to bring in. Other guys that's out there, of course, a guy like Jarvis Landry didn't have a pretty good, didn't have a good year in um, New Orleans last year. Of course, Julio's still out there. If they want to bring somebody in that can, you know, tutor the, the um, you know, the young receiver core. I would like that for the right price because we just know who Julio is. He definitely could teach some of these guys some things. Just about his health. How long could he stay healthy? A guy like Nikhil Harry is another guy who's actually young. He's only 25 years old, but kind of, you know, didn't pan out in New England. And then another older guy, T.Y. Hilton. Um, those are the guys, I, you know, the Atlanta Falcons want to bring in some veteran guys. Um, like I said, it's nothing wrong bringing in a veteran guy because you know those veteran guys um, has been proven. If they still got to step, you know, as far as the time has you know, caught up with them. We don't know, but you know, we know injuries has played a factor in some of those guys' career uh, as of late. So, um, if they can, guy like DeAndre Hopkins, guy like Sammy Watkins, and then any of those other guys, the wide receiver pool in the free agency is really not not something to be like. We need to go get one of these guys. Uh, another guy, Kenny Galloway, is out there as well. But like I said, you know. He got the big payday. His his career just really went down when he went to the Giants. So, um, another guy that you could think about the Atlanta Falcons bringing in. But let me know, guys. Do you really are you really concerned about the receiver room? Um, like most people are. Like I said, I think the Atlanta Falcons do have enough pass catchers. If you want to, you know, include their tight end room, um, the, the the little receivers that we do have are running backs. Of course, you count CP and a new newly added B. John Robinson to that as well. I think they do have those pass catchers, but I think you know, like I said, if if an injury was to happen, then there would be some room for concern there um, in that receiver room. So um, let's see how it pans out. Maybe one of these young guys, undrafted guys, um, a guy like Penny Hart, um, a, a guy like JJ or Sager Whiteside. Dare I say, you know, show some bright spots that could, could really do something. Um, we just don't know. Slate Bolden, another guy that had a lot of, you know, catches in Alabama. Never really hit it in the NFL. So we don't know, you know, what we have in the young receiver core as well. But we're definitely going to find out this offseason doing training count. And maybe the Falcons, they don't like what they see. They add somebody towards the inner training camp. So. But, guys, let me know what you think about our receiver room so far for these Atlanta Falcons. All right, another issue that could be up for you know, concern is definitely the middle, middle linebacker position. Um, we have a lot of linebackers that's, that's been signed. Of course, you know, uh, Andre Smith, um, Trey Davis, the guys they just signed. Of course, you know, K. Nellis. 
Trey Anderson, Michael Walker, all these guys are here. Got a guy like Nate Landman, Dorn Etheridge is here as well. However, you know, um, I, I did like a little bit what Rashawn Evans did last year. He's a guy that I think the Atlanta Falcons really had interest in. Still out there as an unrestricted free agent. So um, we don't know if the interest still there. We're bringing a guy like Rashawn Evans back. But another veteran guy would definitely help out this room. Um, just in case, like I said, you never know about injuries and things like that. But the more depth you can have with some experienced guys, you know, because you don't want to have a drop off if an injury does occur in those areas. Um, so Rashawn Evans is a guy that has familiarity with the team. The defense will change a little bit, but um, he already knows the culture, bringing him back. Um, maybe on another one year deal just to solidify. Um, that linebacker room for this year for this hopefully playoff push for these Atlanta Falcons definitely would be um, something good. Another guy that the Atlanta Falcons could consider is um, Zach Cunningham. Um, if they want to bring a guy like Zach Cunningham in coming from the Tennessee Titans, um, he's only 28 years old. So, like I said, that's somebody that they could definitely consider as well. Um, other guys that's out there. Of course, Deion Jones is still on the market. We know um, what Deion Jones is all about. Corn Alexander, another guy. Um, Miles Jack is another guy. So if, if you know if they want to just test any of these guys out, bring them in. Veteran guys that, like I said, have experience, just to add some experience to the um, the linebacker room, um, and just see what these guys decide to do. I don't know. Maybe, you know, um, Michael Walker and either one of those other guys, Andre Smith or um, Tay, um, Tay Davis, you know, stand up and be the guys that we need. But we know both of those guys are, are more special team aces. Um, and then Doran Etrus and Nate Lemon are so young. So in my eyes, if you talk talking about just some experience, you got really – um, Troy Anderson, Kate Ellis, and Michael Walker, um, which is still not that much experience in that line, middle linebacker room. So those are the two areas of concern, really, for me that I, I really think about. Um, and if the, our guys that we have, you know, in place as starters and things like that stay healthy, I think we should be good. But you start looking at the depth, that's when you start to have, you know, little concerns and maybe. Just maybe the Atlanta Falcons want to kind of address those those two um, positions, you know, towards their depth, right? Um, one honorable mention position, if you just want to look at it, if they want to bring in another veteran guy um, on the offensive line, um, maybe at center. I think they in love with Drew Dahlman. So, um, but if a guy like Ben Jones has some has some um, familiarity with Arthur Smith. Coming from the Tennessee Titans, um, 33 year old, but we still think, still think he can actually have something left in the tank. So if they want to bring a guy like Ben Jones in, um, if they don't think that Drew Dahlman can, you know, pan out the way they want him to do. However, I really believe they do like Drew Dahlman. So um, this just out there, just mentioning that a guy like Ben Jones is still out there. And then we all we already had talked about the um, the swing tackle position. So a guy like um, Jawan Jones coming out of Baltimore is another guy that they could maybe consider. We see Jermaine Fetty actually got picked up. So, um, but a guy like Jawan Jones coming in with that experience, being that swing tackle for us, definitely could be something that Atlanta Falcons could consider. Um, we know they got, a, like I said, a lot of guys in that offensive line room that can definitely compete for those positions. Um, even center because they got Matt Hennessy still here. Of course, Javon Gwynn is another guy who's competing for that center position. So, um, but if they want to go older, get more experience, um, I think this year, and I said in a, a numerous time that Atlanta Falcons is trying to actually go out and compete at a high level this year. So these are positions they really need to make sure that they have solidified forest depth because if not. Um, we have an injury, you know, it could derail 
um, something that the Atlanta Falcons are really trying to do special this year. So, um, good off season, but definitely some some areas that they might want to look at, depending on how our young guys um, compete and have developed, you know, over this over this 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 off season. And maybe they don't have to make any moves because they're comfortable with the guys that they got. And if that's the case, you love it because they're young. They'll be cheaper. And they got a lot of room to grow, you know, in the years to come. So, guys, those are the areas of concern for me. Um, I really want to hear from you guys. Maybe I'm just being overcautious because I feel like we really got a good opportunity this year. But when you're looking at the roster and you're looking at maybe be some some um, areas that definitely could derail us if, if something goes wrong. Like I said, knock on wood, um, we might have to think about, you know, adding some veteran guys in these spots. I know everybody's seen the news with DeAndre Hopkins today, and it was like, Falcons go get him. We saw what CP changed his profile picture on Twitter to DeAndre Hopkins, our resident recruiter for the Atlanta Falcons. But um, I believe that DeAndre Hopkins probably end up in the AFC somewhere, um, and we will definitely. But I would I would say this: Atlanta Falcons should lease. You know, call and see the interest there and see what his his action price would be if he wanted to come to the Atlanta Falcons, at least for that. So, guys, that's all I have. Let me know. Are you concerned about these issues or these these, you know, two different positions, a linebacker and the receiver room as I am? This is your boy, Ricondo, coming back at you with another video. Peace.